Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Oh, happy Wednesday, happy Thursday, happy today and thank you so much for being here. Today we have a really fun project. We are going to be wet felting these really cute drawstring bags. Just a little bit of wool, a little bit of silk fabric and you can make some really fun no-sew drawstring bags. We're going to make the one on the left today which is a top draw, flat bottom and I really hope it's fun. It's a super beginner, beginner friendly project and I'm excited to share it with you. So thank you all for being here. If you are live, say hi over here in the chat. If you're watching the replay, please comment down below. There are always chances to win prizes during our show just by chiming in. So let me say hi to just a few people. Sue Bingham is in Colorado. Gabriella is in the Czech Republic. Thank you so much for being here. I know you're staying up a little late probably. Daria is in Boston. Karen Whaley is in California. Or is that Canada? California. I, California? <laughs> Very nice. Linda's in Tennessee, always here. Hi to Deborah in England, Alex in the UK, Tina in Virginia, Carol in Arizona, Diana, Wisconsin, and everybody else. Thank you for being here today. Last week, we wet felted these nano felt pillows. We're going to use that as a jumping off point for today's project. Um, and you can win prizes just by participating in the chat, answering questions, giving each other tips. So I'm going to give away two prizes real quick from last week's show. Congratulations to Linda Ragsdale and Debbie Garcia Benson for participating after the live feed. You have won either a wet felting activity kit, we have three different colors you can choose from, or a Hello Pumpkin kit. So if you don't know what that is, just reach out to us and we'll help you pick your prizes. So since we are wet felting today, the fairies have lined up with some fun things to share with you that you might consider for your projects. And the first up is the Fairy Magical Fairy Trish. Hi y'all. If you'd like to mix things up a little bit, we have some wonderful specialty designer bags. This one is beautiful blues. Comes with all these gorgeous fibers you see, a little bit of bling from our Angelina, and some pre-felt. Next up, the fabulous Fairy Jamie. Woo -woo -woo -woo! Hi everyone, I'm Jamie, and um, if you guys are wanting to do what, we're, what Marie's doing today, all you're really going to need is some mesh, some um, thin resist, and some bubble. However, if you want some extra stuff, we do have this wonderful wet felting tools bundle. It's going to come with just about everything you need. It'll come with a Bob Ross, some of that bubble, um, some of the thin resist, um, as well as ribbon, um, soap, <laughs> and a few other things as well as this wonderful bag. And the next up is going to be Fairy Alyssa. Hello, so today we are wet felting over a resist. If you want to do more than just a bag, you can grab this grab and go beanie. Um, it comes in lots of different colors. It's so much fun to do and you can have a matching hat with your bag. Up next is Fairy Marie. <laughs> I'm back, but I'm not the last one. Our fairy in the field bringing you a couple of chuckles, the funny fairy, Kayla. Hey everybody, happy Wooly Wednesday. I hope you're having a great week and, and I hope you're ready to do some felting and have some fun. Real quick though, before you get started, I wanted to pop in, share some funniness with you. So, what does garlic do? on a hot summer day. What does garlic do on a hot summer day? They take their clothes off. Ah! <laughs> I'm sorry, that one is like my, my favorite joke I think I've ever told. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great week and we'll see you next week, okay? Bye-bye. Oh, we couldn't do it without him. This is a smattering of our crew. They answer the phones, answer your emails, pack your orders, and make absolutely everything that we lovingly ship to you. So thanks for putting up with a little bit of our kookiness. Um, for those of you who don't know us, welcome. We are Living Felt based in Central Texas, but we are so grateful to have all of you all over the world chiming in and felting with us. I hope that today you'll uh, check out our project. Uh, we're going to jump into it. This is the bag we're going to be making is a wet felted bag over a resist 
and really we use just a few supplies to do that. But first we're gonna talk about planning your project and how to get set up for wet felting, something where the size actually matters. So um, we are going to get started. I'm gonna tell you that there is a PDF available for today. We don't have a kit per se, because the supplies are so simple, but if you're wanting a kit or looking for one, please say so in the chat. And I know that we can put together one pretty easily for you, but you can get a PDF if you want the written instructions, the directions on the calculation, and a pattern for the project we're doing today or you can just follow the video, whichever you like. So I'll let you look in here on this bag real quick while I get myself together. I'll show you simply the supplies we're using. Two ounces of Merino top. I just chose one color and I chose an exact matching color of viscose for a little bit of sheen and then some other embellishment fabrics, which I'll show you. The most important thing to know when you're working on a bag or you're making something like Alyssa was showing you the hat is you want to know uh, the size. You need to know the end result size that you want and then we need to do calculations for shrinkage. And I know that people get hung up a little bit on this step. I want to go over it with you and kind of just demystify that process a little bit. It's just a little tiny bit of math and the logic I know that most of you will get pretty easily. Anything popping up just yet, Jordan? Uh, where can they find the PDF? Okay, you're going to want to follow the link in the today's description for supplies, and everything is on that page, the PDF and all of the supplies. Okay, let's look at how we figure out how big to make our resist when you know um, the size that you want. This is the size of the body of my bag, essentially. So here's my bag. And I want a bag that is going to be 10 inches wide by 13 inches tall on just the wool portion. So I need, I want this bag to hold something like, in this case, this would hold my um, little tablet that I use in my studio. Uh, right now I have in it my embroidery floss. So you can see the size of this bag and it can hold that weight. And I want the body of the bag to be able to handle that item. You need a little bit of space and you need the drawstring to go up. You can't make the height, the exact height, or you won't have any room to scrunch your bag closed. So plan for the body of the bag to be tall enough to hold your item and then a few inches with some fiber and some fabric to accommodate for a little bit of a scrunch closed. My bag is going to be 10 by 13, but how do we get to the size of the resist? We do need to make a sample. Last week, we made a sample using fibers and fabrics to calculate shrinkage. Um, matching the other bag that I have, I also have a little sample piece here, testing out my silk fabrics evaluating how everything shrinks. And I knew that in making this bag, I wanted to plan for a 30 to 40% shrinkage because I wanted the bag to be very durable and well shrunk. You don't want it to be um, loose at all. You want it to really hold together and be strong. So between a 30 and 40% shrinkage, I knew I would be happy with. Therefore, I went for a 35% shrinkage. When we calculate shrinkage, we have to, it's very, very simple actually. So we have, um, we know that our sample, with our sample, we knew that I was going for a 35% shrinkage. You get that number by making a sample. Sample is going to vary depending on the items that you're using. Different fibers, different fabrics, different um, design embellishments, whatever. But that was my goal. My end bag, I wanted to be uh, 13 inches tall, so my target height, my target height is 13 inches, uh, 13 inches, and then my target width is 10 inches. So since my shrinkage is 35%, then I know that 13 inches is equal to 65% of some number. So it's always one minus the shrinkage rate is how you get that number. So if I take um, 13 divided by 0.65, I'm 
I'm going to get 20 inches. And if I take 10 divided by 0 0.65, I'm going to get 15.5 inches. So whatever's that shrinkage rate, one minus the shrinkage rate is going to give you that percentage that you divide by. And if that seems weird at all, all you have to know is 13 is 65% of some number and 10 is 65% of some number. And that's how you get the calculation of how big to make your resist. So here is my resist. And I wanna tell you how to build, I'm gonna turn it sideways so you can see it. So this resist at the base is 15.5 inches wide, the height to here is 20 inches. So from here is 20 inches. Now I've given myself a little bit of room at the top and that's because we're gonna stop our wool here and we want a little more resist left so that our wool just doesn't come to the end and close up. We're going to be making what we call an open resist, and that means that we don't encase the resist completely in wool 100%. The wool is gonna stop here. So make your template, a it could be two to four inches taller. But what I want you to also notice is that the bottom is 15 and a half inches, but the top is only 14 inches wide. I just taper it in a little bit because as we wet felt over resist, the tops always tend to sort of flay out a little bit. We're making a drawstring bag, so that's less important, but to help control things, we taper in the top a little bit, and it's also going to help it keeping from just easily slipping off the resist so nicely because it's gonna grab a little bit closer up here. The last thing I wanna tell you is I just use a mug or a cup, or in this case, I use like a tape roll to round the corners. So before you get started, do your quick calculations. This is going to be our end size, and this is going to be the resist we build it on, and I mark where the wool goes, like where I want that to stop. Okay, are there any questions before we get started with that? So far, uh, Donna asks, how large of a sample do you need to make to calculate this? Donna, I'm, I'm so glad you asked that. I would say make a sample that's either an 8 by 8 inch square, 10 by 10 inch square, or 12 by 12 inch square. But between, eight, depending on what design elements you choose. So if you were making something with a bunch of baubles on top, you might want to go a little bit larger and try and scale those baubles as well. But 10 inch is pretty safe. Uh, a 12 inch is very safe and an 8 inch if you're, especially if you're doing just a thin, very simple layout like we are, will work as well also. Anything else on that? Uh, Kevin asks, once you make this resist template, can you reuse it? Oh yes, Kevin, this, this material, uh, this is just the, the regular resist that we sell. Yes, you can use it over and over and you can save it, you can mark it, you can also pair it with your pattern. And um, for my large ones, I like to store them on trouser hangers. I just clip them on a trouser hangers and hang them in the, the closet in my studio. If you have very thin, you can also kind of put them in a binder or a file folder or something. So yeah, save these and use them over and over. Just mark them. And if you pair them with a pattern, they'll be more useful. Otherwise, you just end up cutting them up again, I promise. Okay, good. The one other tip I wanna cover on supplies. So we looked at, we're doing our merino top. You're going to take your merino top, it's two ounces. We're gonna use one ounce for the, just. Let's just call this the, you know, the front and the back or side one and two, it doesn't really matter. So you're gonna use one ounce for one side and one ounce for the other side. But what I am gonna have you do is once you got those two ounces um, separated, so once you separate this into two ounces, then you're gonna take each ounce and divide it into quarters. And that's gonna help you sort of gate yourself as you lay out the fiber on, on each side and not be too heavy handed. If you separate your fibers, you have more control in straightening the fibers, getting them nice and flat, and doing a thin layout because we're only gonna use one ounce of fiber on each side. The other thing is on your silk fabrics when you're choosing them, my guidance is this. So we use silk fabrics from our sari parties uh, and they are approximately 18 inches by nine to 11 inches. When you're choosing your silk fabrics, a couple of things to note, you don't wanna use these heavy brocades because we're gonna be trapping the cut edges in wool. So you need this to be very feltable, um, whatever. So I wouldn't use this with the heavy 
trim. The other thing is you don't want to be able to like put your finger through it. If the fabric is very fragile, then your drawstrings are really going to wear it down over time. So just choose a nice piece of fabric that's fairly uniform, it doesn't have a lot of heavy trims, and if you have these wrinkles and such, well then give it a quick press uh, before you use it so that you're not trying to deal with this once you're doing your layout. That's it. So two ounces of fiber, I used a little bit of embellishment fiber, and pick, pick your silks. We are going to be cutting our silks, so your silk needs to be wide enough, and I'll show you that, how we use it, and it'll all make sense, but we're gonna be cutting this in half the long way. So why don't we jump into this project? If there's no questions to get us started, I'll talk you through it. Okay, here we go. As I mentioned, we're gonna take our fiber in the bowl is for one side, and in my hand is for the other side. This is my viscose. It's matching just for a little bit of sheen. You could also use a contrast. Here's my silk fabric. I chose green for this bag, and you can see we're gonna be cutting it in half the long way. I'm choosing a couple of silk fabrics from last week's project, some handmade pre-felt, some silky papers, links to making pre-felt and silky papers in the description. Simple wet felting tools, towels, pool noodle, bubble wrap, ball brass, water, room temperature, soap, mesh, larger than your project, two pieces of plastic I think is a good idea for this one and here you can see the sizes that we just went over my pattern is square but the resist is rounded the bottom is slightly wider than the top um, that's really helpful and there's our wool line okay remember to leave a little bit of gap on the top of the resist all right I'm just showing you the silks here. They, we want them to extend a little past the top of your resist. A couple of inches is good because we're going to be folding them in. We begin laying out our fiber at the wool line and we're going to go horizontal. Thin little pulls, slightly overlapping each little tuft and getting everything nice and straight. Really what we want is a nice, even layout. And you wanna extend slightly past the edges of the resist. Just a little bit over a half inch an inch is enough there. And you're going to cover this entire side in that horizontal layer. This is a great project to practice thin, even layouts take your time. It really doesn't take that long because it's really very simple, but just work on controlling your fiber and cover side one a hundred percent. Once that's all finished, Go ahead and pat all the areas, feel if there's any bare spots, any thin areas, and just put another little tuft of wool so that everything's nice and even. Don't wait to find out you have holes once you felted something. Find it in the layout process. Then we're going to place our silk, and there's a couple of ways to do this. One way is to go ahead and welt that top fiber a little bit now, and take that piece of silk, fold it in half, and put the cut edges right at the top. I have about one inch of my silk fabric in the wool and I want to get that silk fabric wet so it stays in place. Now the silk is slightly resistant to water and this is very natural so just be patient. You can also use your mesh to help press the water in. And then we're going to tuck in the edges. So I show you two different ways to do this. This way is after it's wet. Fold those side edges in. <laughs> Excuse me, and you don't have to stitch it, but you could if you wanted to, if you knew in advance. We don't want that end sticking past the resist. We want it kind of flush with the resist. And then over here, we're folding the other side. Just get it all nice and laid down. Now we're going to cover this, these cut edges with fiber. And we're doing our vertical layer now. So cover all the same wool that you just laid down and you really do want those cut edges covered 100%. Proceed all the way down and cover side one in a vertical layer. Two 
Sometimes I find that I'm a little heavier handed in my first layer and I might use a little more than half of my fiber. I don't really worry about it. It just means I'm a little thinner and lighter on the top layer and I never really find that I have a problem with that. So just do your best not to use more than the one ounce on the one side if you want the same sort of shrinkage that I went for on this particular bag. Get this all nice and pressed out and even. I'm gonna answer some of these questions in just a moment. Uh, let us just cap it off here with the design layer and then we'll answer those questions. I'm just clouding a viscose on top for a little bit of sheen. I didn't use all that much, so it doesn't even show all that much. It's just a little bit of shine. If you want to see some really striking results, you might see some of our other tutorials where we use viscose, especially like our wet felting of fire bowl, which we link to in the description as well. And that can be really fun what viscose can do on the top. But you can use tuss of silk, bamboo, silk hankies, whatever you want on the top of this bag. <clears throat> Now for my final design I'm going to use, this is a piece of handmade pre-felt. You can wet the base fiber first and then place your design elements or just place your design elements first and get them where you want them. You can, you're, it's easier to reposition if the fiber is dry and you're watching me here just figure it out. I had no design plan. I knew I just kind of wanted to be somewhat minimalistic while adding a little bit of interest. So I left my base fiber dry uh, while getting these in place. And here we go. We're going to wet and soap outside one we're always in this process adding soap and water and removing air. So I like to start in the middle, pressing water and soap in and air out and work my way out just like you're hanging a poster or pressing in shelf paper, being really methodical about this. Every area should be wet, should be flat, and should have soap in it as well. And just take your time here pressing all that out. This is what the mesh is for. It's really great for that. I'm doing a little bit of hand rubbing now, but not much. And we don't go past the edges of the resist. I'm just trying to get everything just really laying down together here and very just a couple of minutes of hand rubbing. Peel back your mesh at a very shallow angle. Make sure nothing is sticking to it. You don't want to just rip your mesh up because everything will come off or pieces will anyway, but peel it back at a very shallow angle and make sure everything lays down. Once you remove your mesh, we replace it with plastic and I like to get the top a little bit wet and soapy so that I can rub through it as well. And we'll spend just a couple of minutes massaging the top getting everything nice and smooth. And we're starting to felt it a little bit, but notice that we never go past the edges of the resist. We never touch any of that wool that's off the edge of the resist. So just about five minutes rubbing the top. Now, some of you've asked some really great questions and if I don't capture them, Jordan's gonna tell them to me as well. So someone asked if you wanted to make the bag stronger. I don't know who asked, asked this. If you wanna make the bag stronger, could you put a layer of silk inside? And I was going to mention that. So there's a couple of reasons that you might decide to lay down a layer of silk inside or even just cover, wrap it around the edges. One would be if you wanted to use even less fiber on top, like you could do a single layer in that uh, herringbone fashion that we did last week because the silk forms a base layer, so if you want it thinner. The question was, could you use silk if you wanted it to be stronger? And silk can definitely add, it adds a little bit of a ghost layer, but if you felt your fiber really well, it's going to be strong. You could also add more wool to make it stronger on the bottom. Um, you could add more silk if you're concerned about the inside of your bag pilling. Silk can form like a barrier between the wool. So if you're gonna be putting like a pair of shoes in and out of this bag over and over, you might consider some silk gauze on the inside uh, base layer just to add a, a barrier between the wool and whatever's abrading it. So there's a few reasons, reasons you could choose to put down a silk layer and yes, you can do that, absolutely. Might be, might be just for interest that you wanna line it with silk as well. In fact, when we do this, this part, this whole part could have been silk on the, you know, this whole piece could have been silk with this just sticking up on the outside. And um, 
I've definitely done that before. I've made whole bags just around the silk, but in this case, I wanted to give you the ability to use scraps. So the answer is yes and yes, and there's lots of reasons you might do that. Um, what if a, you use a coarser wool than uh, merino, Rita? Then make yourself a sample. You've got to evaluate how does the wool that you're using work with whatever design embellishments you have, including the silk fabrics. So the best thing to do is make a sample, see how they perform together, and how much shrinkage you get. That's always going to be my answer. Good question, though. Um, would you wet the silk first before you lay it down to help it stay in place? I'm not going to wet it while it's in the air, Helen. I will. I want it in place because if I get it wet, it's just going to stick to itself immediately. So that's why I showed either you can put the fiber, uh, you can wet the fiber and lay the silk down, or you'll see on side two that I lay the silk down and then I wet the silk. So I'm showing you two different ways to do that. Brenda, great question. Do you put a little bit of wool in between the silk to help it adhere? You might if the if the fabric you're using is a little more resistant to binding with the fiber. I knew from my samples how this was going to perform with a single layer of fiber and I knew that I would get some adhesion because we went wool, silk, wool. There was no question to me that the wool was going to migrate to the centers, but if you're not sure, make, make a test with that little fold in it and you can just have like a little ruffle and you could certainly put wool in between there. Great question. Um, no need for a resist inside the silk. No, Marlene, but that's because I left enough room up here to have a channel. If when you lay these fibers down, uh, maybe we can go overhead, Jordan. If when you lay your fibers down on this top layer here, if they're extending too high, then they're going to kind of hold it down. So you see how I have a, uh, like more than an inch. I have about an inch and a half up here above where the wool is. Plenty of room for my channel to go through. Um, do the silk pieces move during rubbing or do they stay in place? Here's your knowledge about that. We felted this together last week, so make a test sample. They're going to stay in place um, pretty well. They like to stick down, but you, you don't want them to move. If they're moving when you're rubbing, you're using too much pressure. How much does the silk shrink? You're going to have to evaluate that, Lynette, based on your own samples. So I've achieved a 35% shrinkage on this bag, and that's why we get all the little crinkly, ruching stuff. Um, how does felt hold up, rain or being wet? Andrew, felt is like the strongest known textile. Felt is incredibly strong. So when it gets wet, it's not going to be um, more weak, but it might you know, stretch a little bit. But the thing about felt is felt is sort of irreversible. The one way um, scales on the fiber lock down like a zip tie. And so it's very, very strong. And so it was being wet or being what? Being wet or what? Andrew asked the question, uh, would we lose it? Uh, terrain or being wet? Yeah, a, a really good made felt, initial rain is going to beat off of it, but felt will absorb, uh, I think like up to 70% of its body weight, of its own weight, so it'll absorb water. Um, but keep in mind that yurts are made out of handmade felt. So the, it, it will matter how well you make your felt for sure. So you wanna make a good strong piece felt. All right, so we've done side one. You all have had some really great questions. Let's jump into side two. It's really a repeat of side one with less design. But we flip our project over and um, we're going to wrap all of the wool from side one over to side two. I like to use my plastic to do that. It really helps just to get everything hugging. Because this is such a thin project, this is so super easy. And since the fiber is wet, well then it just lays down really easily as well. So if you've not tried wet felting over resist, this is a great uh, even first project to try. And just get everything laying down on that resist nice and even as you can. If you have any areas that are thin, make note of them so that you fill them in. Again, we start at the top at the wool line and we're going to go horizontal. This whole first pass is just like we did on side one. Cover everything with a horizontal layer. Make it all really nice and even. Uh, Kasha wants to see a close-up. We'll show you that after. Um, 
and I see some other questions. So let's just cover this 100%. Now the thing to note on this side is that we're not letting a lot of the wool stick over the edges. Some is fine, but we're not trying to make it stick over because the project's so thin, we don't want the edges or sides of our bag bulkier than the rest. So keep most of the wool on this side. Here's another way to approach the silk. Pre-fold one end, lay it down on the dry fiber. Again, we're only going about as far as the resist, so we're folding in the second end. And then we're going to wet it so it stays in place. So Marlene wants to know, would it be advisable if you brought the wool up to the top edge of the silk for a stronger drawstring area? Marlene, I didn't want the wool coming through the silk. I wanted to see the silk. If you did that, then you would need to put a resist in there to keep it from sticking together. So if you wanted to do that on the inside of the bag, but I didn't want it for design reasons. So go ahead and wet um, out this side. We did our horizontal layer and our vertical layer. I know that might have gone kind of fast. We are, I did only put viscose on this and no other design embellishments. And now I'm at the wetting out my plastic phase and flipping over to side one again. Now, we need to bring any of the fibers that were extending from side two over on top of side one. So we didn't maybe intend to have them, but some definitely came. So definitely wrap those back around to the front. Notice whether you need to cover your silk any more along the bottom. You definitely want about an inch of the bottom of that silk fabric covered in wool. So if you need any more, go ahead and add a little more merino top. And if you're someone who prefers a very clean edge, then you could use something like um, a pre-felt, either that you made from the same fiber or from like our PFM pre-felt in a matching color or as close as you can and get a very clean edge. So you might try that if you like it. Um, could batting be used? Yes, if you can wet felt with it, you can use it for this project. Absolutely, you can. Um, yes, you can. How thick is it when it's done? Can you put, could you put a hand inside front and back? I don't understand the question. Just how thick is it when you kind of put it between your hands, I think? Oh, um, it's, it's more, I, it's really going to depend on how thick you lay down your fiber, but it's about a millimeter or so. I'd say it's about a millimeter thick. How much weight can the finished carry while holding the ribbon? I don't know. Y'all are going to have to make your bags the way you need them for the integrity. Mine, I don't know how much this, this floss thing weighs, but Jordan saw me. We'll, do, we'll drop it on the scale. Why not? Whatever. Y'all are... I don't know. I'm not going to say put, put bricks in it or it's not designed for a gallon of milk. This fancy handmade bag is like for a special gift or a special keepsake or, um, yeah, I don't know. But it's not to carry around, you know. You could care. So this thing weighs 1.7 ounces and for my um, friends, uh, about 670 grams for my bag. Now these are vintage silks on the top, so I'm not gonna try and put them through their paces, but there you go. So this thing is plenty strong and my silk is not tearing. All right, let's felt this bag, y'all. Uh, was there something else? No, we're good? Uh, I think you said one ounce, that was one pound, right? No? Oh, it was 1.8. It's like, this, this thing is like a pound and a half. Right. Yeah, 1.8. So, sorry. It is 1.8 pounds. Perfect. Sorry. I apologize. Yes, 1.8 pounds is this little box that I'm holding. Okay. We're going to felt our bag a little bit through the plastic. This is an important stage, at least for me. I like to form an initial skin and just get everything holding on to the resist. So I'm rubbing to the middle of the resist and rubbing along those edges. And we're going to do that from both sides. So plan for at least, you know, about five minutes on each side. And then we're going to take off that bottom piece of plastic, turn our project back over top side up and we're going to begin to roll. Now notice that we are rolling from the sides first. We are going to roll this project from all four sides, top, 
and all four sides or edges bottom. But we're going to roll the sides first because we're using this open resist. This is going to help favor the shrinkage side to side in the beginning. So normally we do like a clockwise turn, but notice I'm rolling from a side edge and then I'm gonna flip it and roll it from the other side edge. This allows it to really hug on that resist um, before we roll it in any other direction. We don't want it scooching off the resist. So side to side first, and then we're gonna roll top to bottom and bottom to top on, the, on side one. Don't worry if you noticed your resist is already starting to bow. This fiber, our merino top 19.5 is going to shrink up pretty quick, but we've got plenty of rolling to do before we take it off the resist. And so I'm encouraging you to roll at least 800 times. So 400 sides from the top and then 400 sides from the bottom. If you've never made a piece of felt, Check out our you know, wet felting uh, pancake lesson or artful felt fabric. I promise you'll have a lot of fun and then you'll be off and making a bag in no time. <clears throat> I'm just checking that my silk fabrics are kind of staying in place. They're just getting a little bit of fiber migration right now, not much at all, and keep everything nice and straight. And from the back side, we're rolling side to side again, then top to bottom and bottom to top. And um, just take your time on this. There's no rushing making a piece of handmade fabric or handmade felt. It's kind of like making dough. You need to go through the steps and you need to go through that process. I'm always feeling my way as I go. And now I've made my 800 rolls and I'm gonna look in here and check. How is everything doing? How is it looking? How is it starting to stick? So from here forward, what I want to do is roll the project without the pull noodle. There's something about removing that girth and getting the fibers a little bit closer together. It feels like it speeds up the felting and allows them to migrate a little more quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see that my project is starting to bow on my resist, but I really want to evaluate it before I take that resist out. The bag is holding together, but some areas might feel just a little mushy, and anywhere that is, I encourage you to take a minute, do some hand rubbing, or do more rolling. You want the entire thing to feel like a pretty well-started piece of fabric. Like when it passes the pinch test, you can pinch it and it comes up as one piece of fabric. It doesn't feel like the fibers are gonna come apart. So what you see here is me giving it a, another rub pass across both sides. And I really wanna emphasize the importance of taking the time to do this before removing the resist. Now we're gonna continue our felting off the resist. We're going to feel it and the inside initially, we're, you know, you might be concerned that it's going to stick together, but don't worry. You're going to be putting your hand inside that bag frequently. So I've removed a tiny bit of the water. Sorry, it's going a little fast for me. I can't really speak that fast. Um, I've removed a tiny bit of the water from the bag. This is just gonna make a little bit of more space for the fibers to get together, but you're not wringing it dry or anything. You're going to continue rolling and continue rubbing, but before we do, we want to begin to hand rub the side edges that were kind of trained against the resist. We didn't form a seam or anything, but the felt just kind of peaks there on the very edges of the resist. So work your way around the edges of the bag and just work those out so that you don't like have a point and then continue rolling. If you're concerned at all as you're rubbing and rolling, then just put your hands inside the bag, but it's time to turn it inside out anyway. And we're going to felt it from the inside out. So continue rolling. Remember that felt shrinks not only in the direction it was laid, but also in the direction that it's agitated. And that's why we're constantly turning the bag, rolling it from the side edges, rolling it from the bottom edges, rolling it from the top down, flipping it upside down. We want this entire thing to shrink equally until such time we evaluate that it's longer than it needs to be or wider than it needs to be. Then we go back and work those edges more. So pause at this place a few times, notice how much shrinkage you have left to go, 
this is the body of my bag I need to shrink it down a little bit more and keep in mind that you want to get to that shrinkage because that's going to be you know make a stronger felt for yourself so expect to continue working that bag and shrinking it and you can also tug it if some parts start to go in more than you want you can pull those out a little bit some area like a corner is sticking out you can just spot full it but once you have pretty close like 90% of your shrinkage if you want you can um, get a little more aggressive now we're in the fulling stage which is the further shrinking and tightening of the felt I like to do a little bit of tossing, a little bit of wadding like we did on our nano felt pillows. If you were with us last week, we just made that a big piece of flat fabric and then sewed them into the pillows. So if you're not sure about the process, watch that video or like I said, almost any of our other wet felting videos where we kind of go into length on how to do it. And um, that's how you're going to learn what the felt feels like in your hands. You're going to learn you know, you're gonna know, you can even cut, start to cut a few of your samples as you're learning and see how strong of a fabric you've created. So it's a really good process to do. Um, so once you finish felting your bag, you're happy, you've got the size that you wanted to achieve, rinse out all of the soap and water, all the water, rinse out all of the soap until your project runs clear. And then in a bowl or a bucket or a bin or the sink, put some water and just like a couple of tablespoons of vinegar and let that soak for about 15 minutes while you clean up your workstation. That is going to help break down the final remnants of soap residue and it's going to help bring the wool back to its natural pH, which is slightly more acidic. It, that's its normal state. Um, it's less fragile at that state. It also has a little more sheen and it feels more soft like you would expect. Then I do like to steam press. I think we did that even last time. I like to steam press my bag and get it all nice and pretty. And then let's just look up here at the uh, channel. So I know some people want to show a close-up. Can we zoom in here a little bit, Jordan? And you want to see a close-up of how the, the silk is crinkled. So not only is it crinkled, but you can see the dark fibers coming through, which I really like. Here, this is one of the silky papers. I think that's Tussa silk under Tussa. It could be bamboo or viscose, I don't remember. But the silky papers, um, before they're felted, this is what they look like. We made some big uh, silky papers. It's not the same color, but you can see this is the same dark color. This is a piece of handmade pre-felt, which is actually a nano felt pre-felt. So there's wool and there's silk fabric right there. So that was a nano felt pre-felt and more silk that we used last week. So you can see that this is the same, uh, this, sorry, let me go here. This is the same fabric that we used last week. And on this example, I've shrunk it even more than this example. This one we shrunk 30%. This one I know I shrunk 35%. And this is the same fiber too, but we used that one on orange instead of brown, the silk fabric here. So that's a close up. Um, this top edge is silk edge raw where the where the ribbon comes out. No, Helen, you'll recall that in the video we folded this back. So watch that back. We do it on both sides. Uh, on the first side, we laid it down and got it wet, and then we folded the edges in. And then on the back, we folded the edges in and then laid the silk down. So there, these are not raw edges here. They're folded, and the wool just kind of hems it in place, which is kind of magical. Um, Suzanne, do you have to put in a smaller resist? No, you don't have to do that. You don't want to take the resist out until the project is at a place uh, where it's pretty much not going to stick together. That doesn't mean that some of the fibers aren't going to start to migrate. Sometimes you might put your hand in there and just need to tell everyone to get back on their side a little bit. That's fine. Um, but you don't want to take it off the resist until it's felting enough. What happens is it's the fibers are interlocking enough and getting close enough together that they start to pull together and then the resist starts to bow and curl up on itself so that's when you know the fibers are really progressing but push it a little bit past that phase um, Rita how long should I plan to make a bag like this Rita it really depends on your experience but I made this bag in I want to say under two hours um, so get your resist ready get your fibers ready and everything it really doesn't take that long because it's so thin and because we use fine merino tops um, but a couple of hours so if you're not that experienced plan you know half a day to get yourself set up felting done cleaned up 
Yeah. Where do you get your vintage silks? Susie, we import them from India and you are welcome to check out our Sari Party um, silk packs. We have more on the way. They've been incredibly popular. So right now we have, the, they're called Sari Parties. You'll find them under the silk fabrics. They're a collection of 10 different silks that are about this size by color family. And you'll want to read the full description so you understand everything about them. But we have lots more on the way, lots more silk, sorry, silk fun coming, but we're importing them directly. What else? A lot of people are asking about the silky paper. There's a tutorial for that, right? The silky paper is so fun. So we made this stuff, and I, I have tons of it, by the way. So silky paper from Viscose, from Tessa Silk, and from Bamboo Top. Uh, it's really fun to make, and you can make big sheets and then just save it in like your memory keepers type boxes or flat, you know, little flat scrapbooking type boxes. And um, there is a tutorial. We link to it in the description. And um, if you happen to pick up the PDF, you're going to find um, two links in there as well. But the I think we link to it in the description. If you can't find it, go to our website and click on Learn. That's going to take you to Wooly Wednesday. And under Wooly Wednesday, look for there's a picture of me holding up something that looks like a little mosaic or patchwork. I had it last week. I didn't bring it this week. Look for those videos because they're right there and they're from. 2020. So livingfelt.com forward slash learn, click on Wooly Wednesday, go to 2020, and you're going to see those two tutorials right next to each other. It's so fun to make your own pre felts, that's the one, and the um, silky papers, the other. And then you're going to have really unique, original creations. No one else will have something like it. Cool. What else? Any other questions? Would a palm washboard work? Yes, you can felt with the wa a palm washboard. I felt a whole lot with my hands. I need to know how things are feeling. Um, a lot of people use the palm washboard. Someone's going to say, what's a palm washboard? <laughs> what is the palm? I know I have one here. Hold on. Huh? Oh, I have it right here. <laughs> Sorry. Right here. I know I have another one in the drawer and I have them in the sink room. So the palm washboard is made by Heartfelt Silks here in the United States. Um, it's got this waffle bottom. It's a patented project, so don't get a substitute. If we're out, we'll just buy it from Heartfelt Silks. I know we have another shipment on the way, but it's fantastic. So especially for people who feel like maybe the rolling feels like a challenge, a lot of people use the palm washboard instead. Um, but learn to use it, so use it on your samples and learn to felt small things with it first because it's a heavy tool. It's heavier than your hands and you want to learn how to not be overly aggressive first. People are always asking how to speed up the felting, how to speed things up. And Nuna felting, when we're incorporating wool and fabrics together, we need to slow things down a little bit to give the fibers time to migrate up through that fabric. If you rush it, with being overly aggressive or using hot water, then what happens or what's likely to happen is the wool fiber wants to felt to itself and it's gonna to bind to itself and then the silk is gonna be sitting up here all lonely. And so you wanna keep things just a little bit slow, at least in the beginning, until you know you have some migration of fibers up through that silk. So with that said, if you're using tools to felt on top of the silk fabric, don't felt from the back, felt from the front so that you're kind of drawing the fibers up towards the top. At least that's my, if it feels like it's not working, rub from the top of those silk fabrics to draw the fibers up. Hot tip. Yes, we have a couple fun comments about what people, our ideas are for this bag. Uh, Syrian wants to use it for Christmas presents. Oh, great idea, yes. Heather says it would be nice for wine bottles. Yes, yes. And you might want to round, you know, the bottom if you're using a round bottle. So bottle. So this is the, this is our square, um, our square bottom bag. And like Alyssa was wearing the hat. That's a different, it's a different resist. It's a rounded bottom. So like this bag right here is a flat bottom. And in order to get a little more girth, and this bag is different because, we, do we have time to look at that real fast? 10 minutes. Should we? Okay, let's look at this one. This one is a little bit different. Um, different fabrics uh, that I had in my stash and the difference between these is this one has a flat bottom and on this one I laid the silk on the face of the project. It's right here so there's wool here and there's silk here and in order to achieve that I used a resist underneath that silk 
um, to leave a channel for the drawstring here. So that's this one is a different method, but also in order to get the bottom, to, in order to have this girth or this space here, it's important to have a resist and round that bottom out. So it, it, I draw this here so you can kind of see that's how it's going to be. You know, it's kind of each side is half of that, if you will, on the bag. So you'll want to eyeball it, you know, go back to your grade school drawing classes where you're drawing that oval <laughs> on the plane and just give it a nice round bottom. It should be almost a circle or at least like an eggish ovaly thing to get that bottom there. Uh, I feel like there was something else I wanted to mention on that now and I don't know what it was. Um, something, I don't know the resist, but I just want to encourage you also to maybe like play with a little top stitching on there. We have a little bit, this could be a really fun project to embellish a little bit. So I'm just having fun now doing a little um, top stitching on it. And um, it's really nice to go ahead and run embroidery, just regular embroidery floss and a nice sharp little needle through the felt. It's really kind of satisfying and it's a nice project to do. So you might experiment with that a little bit. You could sew additional fabrics on top and really embellish it. You could even end up lining it if you want. Um, so Tina says, hey, you could try a cell phone bag first. I totally agree. Uh, you can make something small. And um, that's why we wanted to give you today how to get to the measurements so that you know, you know what to start with um, on your measurements. You know how to calculate how to get the size that you want. But I would encourage you maybe try a little top stitching or have a little fun with that because felt is very satisfying to embroider through or just hand stitch through. Cool. Anything else? I think that's it. Uh, a fun, fun, fun. Well, thank you so much, y'all, for, for playing with us today. Um, I hope that you'll make a bag and share it with us. Uh, let us know if you do. We want you to see it. We want to see it, so tag us at Living Felt. And, um, yeah, we love celebrating what you make for sure. I'm excited to see what you make. So Jordan's been writing down your names. We're going to give away some prizes. Lots happening over there yes, in the chat today, lots of huh? names. Yeah, super, super fun. So let me see. What do they win? Okay, here it is. Right. Okay, we're going to draw some names. You go first, okay. Jordan. Oh, boy. Cool. Thanks, y'all, for playing with us today. We really appreciate it. And I've got one. You have one? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm ready. I have Andrew Webster. Oh, very yeah. fun. And I have Maureen McGinnis. So congratulations, y'all. Thank you so much. Congratulations. And what y'all have won is either uh, we'll send you some fibers and fabric to make your own drawstring bag. You just have to supply your own tools and your own drawstring, or you can win um, our ginger beard needle felting a gnome kit if you're just more into needle felting and doing uh, 3D. Cute. Yeah. All right, y'all. Thank you so much. We are, we're back next week. Are we? We're <laughs> going to check that. So check our website, go on learn. Um, click on the Learn tab, go to Wooly Wednesday. There you can see all of our shows. If you make something, please make sure to tag us. Oh, our show schedule's there too. Make sure to tag us at Living Felt. And um, hey, we have some classes going live this week. Yes, we right, do. we do. So uh, feltytutorials.com, we shared last week that this week what's going live is Blossom by Kimberly Pulley and Felting Beautiful Macaws by, beautiful, Sonya, bright and beautiful bright macaws beautiful. by yeah. Sonia Oswald. They are fantastic. So go to feltingtutorials.com. Those two classes are going live. The early bird special, I think, is still on. Check that out. And we can't wait to see what you make with our classes there either. All right, y'all. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.